Vocal Majority is pleased to announce our new online summer camp sessions for 2020. You may be wondering, how on earth are we going to do weed making online? And how are we going to keep kids focused and interested? Where there's a will, there's a way. And we're excited and proud to offer these innovative new schedules with short, attention-grabbing topics, fast-paced and upbeat instructors, and high-level information in a positive and uplifting environment. Tuition will be lower too. Yay! Class size is limited to eight participants. We'll ship you all your materials for free. Everyone will learn how to scrape new reads and make adjustments to already existing reads. And in general, this will be a tremendously worthwhile camp. So please come join us. All right, everybody. So now we're gonna do the tonguing exercise. So we're on page 47 and we're gonna do exercise two. So everybody get ready for exercise two. Watch out for your F sharps and your B naturals. It's gonna sound like this. One e and a two e and a three. One e and a two e and a three. Ready? One, two, here we go. <laughs> playing that exercise on that instrument? I would say keeping my tongue relaxed so that I could um, play this movie. Very good, very good. Hey, does anybody have any ideas for Emily about how she can keep her tongue more relaxed and do that faster? Law tongue. Oh, Alexa says have a law tongue. Would that be helpful for you, do you think? Yes. That's a great suggestion. Way to go. Very good. Hey, who would like to play a piece for us today? I will. Zach, go ahead. I'm playing Mozart's Sonata in B flat. <laughs> job, Zach. Um, does anybody have any feedback for Zach on what could make that performance even better? Or would you like to give him some feedback on what you liked about that performance? Callan. Um, I thought that your phrasing was really nice and it really helped keep it moving forward. Uh, I think that with your vibrato, sometimes it goes a little bit flat. But yeah, really enjoyable. That's a great suggestion. Okay, everybody, it's read class, and we're going to be talking about some common adjustments that you can do. So I want you to see that sometimes the tip of the read is a little bit too thick. And so if I hold this up, you can see in the parts where I have actually put some pencil marks, that's where we're going to be scraping. So we want you to take your knife, and you've got your plaque and your mandrel, and we're going to be scraping off the corners of those tips. So I'm going to show you what that looks like when I'm doing it. Here's a good example. And when you try this yourself, make sure that you're going forward with the knife and come all the way to the plaque and then start your scrape over again. Anybody have any questions about how to do that scraping? Yeah, Zach, what's your question? How should you avoid scraping at the heart? 
Oh, that's a really good question. So the heart is really the strength of the reed and you wanna make sure that you don't scrape it all out. So check the angle of your knife and make sure that you're not angling it like this, angle it to the sides. Does that make sense? Great job, great job. So I wanna show you another kind of adjustment that you can do with your pliers. So take out your pliers now. And so sometimes the reed is a little bit too weak. It's flat, it's floppy, it's not in control. And so we need to build extra strength into the reed. So this is what the reed looks like. And we know that there's the first wire and the second wire. So what we need to do to build strength back into the reed is we need to squeeze the first and or the second wires from side to side. So try this, I'm doing the second wire. I'm gonna squeeze it side to side and that's gonna build more strength into the reed. It also closes the tip down, and so I'm going to squeeze the first wire from side to side, and that will reopen the tip up. So now you try that. And All right, so now it's time for our music theory class. So I definitely want to take any questions you have, but I want to start out by talking about scale degrees. So we know about major scales and minor scales. So for example, if we're talking about the C major scale, you would play C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. We know that there are no sharps, no flats in the key of C major. Well, all of the notes in that scale have a certain scale degree, we call it. So C is scale degree one. D is scale degree two. What's scale degree, scale degree three? That's right, it's E. And F is scale degree what? Four, that's right. And G is scale degree five, A is scale degree six, and B is scale degree seven. And then of course we go back to C, which is both scale degree eight and one. So uh, that's synonymous with itself. So those also have special names. So we call scale degree one the tonic. And does anybody know what scale degree two is called? Oh, that's a really good guess. That's a really good guess. You're very close. So it's called the supertonic. And then the third scale degree is called the mediant. And the fourth scale degree is called the subdominant. And the fifth scale degree is called what? Does anybody know? The dominant. The dominant, that's right. The fifth scale degree is the dominant. And the sixth scale degree is the submediant. There's the submediant. And then we've got the seventh scale degree. Anybody know what that one's called? Leading tone. Leading tone. Leading tone. That's right. Very good. And knowing about these things in music theory can really help you understand the music that you're playing. And so we're going to analyze some music with this in mind.